the next bit, which is basically, um, you know, New Zealand dollar um, and the uh, and the uh, surprise hike and the Australian dollar hawkish hold. Yet we had, um, you know, the Australian dollar kind of sell off, right? Pretty much after the speech, as well as the New Zealand dollar, you know, uh, pretty much went, you know, to, to the heavens on, on maybe an hourly candle and then it retraced all the way back, yeah? Now, why good news but bad price action? And I don't really like to look at things in terms of good or bad, but I'm referencing, and if any of you have read um, his book, it's a book by Brent Donnelly, called do you know what i've forgotten the name of it now it's gone from my head <laughs> um it's called it's called the art of currency trading right it's called the art of currency trading and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to share this book let me know if you can see it can you see this can you guys see it yeah brilliant the art of currency trading have a read if you haven't bought it already i highly advise you do and uh if you you know you've bought it and you've read it once i highly recommend that you read it you know from time to time to kind of refresh yourself and i remember this <clears throat> of, 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 you know within the book and it's a common um i would say it's a common problem it's not not something that's common but it happens from time to time right and um, it's explained by Brent Donnelly, who was a, uh, I think, a market maker for HSBC. Um, and in the book, <clears throat> he talks about why would a currency rally on bad news? And I'm just, I'm just going to read this out. It should hopefully shouldn't take too long, but it gives it the context and he explains it better than you know I could, right? So why would a currency rally on bad news? There are all sorts of reasons for counterintuitive moves in FX after news and economic releases. But the two main ones are the underlying details of the release are not consistent with the headline release. Yeah. So a strong headline, but weak details. And number two, supply and demand, not news, <clears throat> determine FX rates. Right. And basically, let's look at the two uh, separately. And so reversal for a good reason. So headline and the details do not match. And I'll read this. Um, it's only going to take a, maybe five five minutes to read, right? And it says, it says with, when, when there's a reversal for a good reason, the headline yeah, and the details do not match. So in a situation, the reversal makes sense. The initial headline looks extremely bullish or bearish, but there are details or mitigating factors that offset the headline re um, release. And there's an example in it. And I don't really, unless you, unless you really want me to read the, uh, the example, do you want me to read the example quickly? It's probably maybe a couple of pages. Yep. All right, then the call, I'll read it, yeah? <clears throat> so it says, September 10th, uh, 2014, traders wait nervously for the Australian jobs release. The market has been expecting a big fall in the Aussie dollar for months, and the currency is extremely resilient. Any sign, sorry, I just letting Ken in. So any sign of economic weakness is likely to open the door for the sellers, while longs are praying for strong data to keep their profit and loss afloat. The Aussie dollar is trading at 91.60. The market expects the Australian economy to add 15,000 jobs and uh, economists forecast a range from minus 5K to plus 35K. So that's the range, right? So they expected to add 15,000. That's the range. Um, traders in New York are eating a dinner with one eye on the conversation at the table and another eye on their smartphones. FX apps, uh, FX app while traders in Singapore, Sydney, Hong Kong and Tokyo hunch over their keyboards. Everyone watches the seconds tick off until the number is finally set to come out. Three, two, one, the number hits the screens. The result, kaboom, 122,000 jobs, right? And it was expected at what? 15,000 uh, jobs. The strongest jobs number in the history of Australia. That's a massive number, right? Aussie dollar spikes 60 pips instantly from 91.60 to 92.20 and shorts cover in panic, paying off, paying any offer they can. Algos go limit long Australia to capitalize on their calculations that show such a huge beat means Australia or oh, the Aussie dollar should go up at least 1%. So buyers are frantic 
and Aussie dollar trades wildly back and forth between 92 and 92.20 for 90 seconds or so, trying to find an equilibrium. Then after about three minutes, wait, what's this? Full panic on the trading floor as a new red headline hits the wires. So Australian Bureau of Statistics says methodology change has distorted jobs data. In other words, the release is meaningless. Most of the shorts have already been obliterated and anyone who is long is now badly caught. Traders in a position of strength see an incredible opportunity to get short on the Aussie dollar. Uh, as Aussie dollar goes down, 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 check out the chart in figure 10.7. And this is a 10 minute chart of the Aussie dollar around the Australian employment report, 10 for September and 11 at the uh, 2014 so you can see it goes up then all of a sudden the headline comes out and they fade the strength um they fade the strength they fade the uh, news so this type of scenario uh, provides a tremendous opportunity for profit to anyone who is paying attention and is ready to act quickly and forcefully look at how the aussie dollar went straight down after the spike falling 1.5 percent over the next few hours so that's really one of the um scenarios which can cause you know a, a great headline but the details may not you know be um may not support the headline right or the headline might be a bit too uh too bullish or too bearish and the devil is in the details hence the reason why i always say regardless and i've been saying this for years regardless of the headline you know just wait and read the data because um you know, sometimes, yes, we get, you know, massive numbers, but even if we get massive numbers, we always have some sort of pullback. If it's caught the market offside, you'll typically have a pullback. And as long as the fundamentals haven't changed, if they have changed, you can kind of assess from there. And so um, I haven't traded the news and pressed buy or sell on the news in a very long time. It's been, I can't remember, remember the last time I did, maybe over a year um, now where I've actually pressed buy or sell, maybe even longer than that. And so, um, you know, I always say the devil's in the details. So just wait for the news to come out, let it, you know, settle. And again, there are times, this is just my opinion, by the way, I, I can't tell you what to do, but just my opinion. And, um, you know, if, if it's good numbers, you can always get in at some point anyway. I know we want to get in at the absolute lows, but there's always going to be a pullback at some point. Anyways, and then the second thing is there's a reversal for no reason, right? And this happens oh, quite a lot. I say quite a lot, but um, it happens from time to time. Uh, the other type of reversal on news is more confusing. It occurs when the news is unambiguously bullish or bearish and the market goes the logical way at first, but then reverses for no uh, understandable macro reason. Perhaps large buyers were waiting on the sidelines and want to use the sell off following bad news to buy at attractive levels. Uh, when price reverses after big news, the what is more important than the why. If a currency is rallying hard after bad news, don't worry too much about trying to figure out why it's rallying. The fact is that, uh, sorry, the fact that it is rallying on bad news is all the information you need. Counterintuitive reactions to data can give you an important information about the underlying supply and demand. Um, and then rule eight is basically of FX is that it doesn't always have to make sense. That's really important. Sometimes, you know, not everything is going to make sense. And then it says the media's job is to tell the story around every market move. Yeah. And even the best journalists cannot always come up with, the, with a coherent narrative. It doesn't always have to make sense. And it talks about um, an example of that. Uh, I can read the example. It's only few more pages if you want me to or do you guys get the do you guys get the um you get the uh the point yeah you guys get the point or do you want me to read it actually that's to say do you want me to read it yeah go on mark says all right then cool you got there first right so the setup um september 19th 2014 the market has been long dollar cad since one dollar and now the pair is trading at 110 spot traders and hedge funds are keen to add to long dollar positions but if canadian cpi is out today and traders are nervous um a strong number could increase the odds of an interest rate hike by the bank of canada 
see how see this has been going on since 2014 anyone who says that fundamentals don't work right they're absolute bonkers anyways a strong number could increase the odds of an interest rate hike by the bank of canada and so a strong cpi is bearish for the dollar cad makes sense right buying a cad over the dollar the median economist forecast for core cpi is 1.8 with the lowest estimate at 1.5 and the highest at 1.9 so anything above 1.9 is a is big and above two percent is a blockbuster so new york traders put their starbucks somewhere safe so they won't get knocked over when they lunge for the buy or sell buttons while canadian traders do the same with their tom hortons dollar cad traders around the world count down seconds as they wait for the data to hit the screens three two one result blammo the number comes out and it's 2.1 higher than the highest forecast Dollar CAD immediately plummets from 109.80 to 108.95, but then suddenly there's one wave of buying, and then another wave and another, and less than four hours later, Dollar CAD is all the way up, sorry, all the way back to unchanged. Figure 10.8 chart shows. So that was similar to what we saw today on the on the um, New Zealand dollar, right, and the New Zealand pairs. All right, so 10 minute uh, dollar CAD chart around the release of CPI number uh, September 18th, 19th, 2024. There was no fundamental or macro reason for this reversal in price. This is a classic bad news, good price setup. There was a very there was very bad news for the dollar CAD, but it could not hold on to losses and reverse nearly immediately for no known reason. This is bullish price action. Hmm, I don't know about that, but yeah. Um, now look at um, figure ten point nine to see what happened after. You can see in the first uh, chart that the dollar CAD rallied right back to the news pivot level, uh, the one hundred nine eighties. The news pivot became resistance for a few hours, and then it broke. Zoom, zoom. Uh, dollar CAD trended higher to 1070. Uh, and so that was where we were before prices kind of came down, then it went, you know, further up, right? Uh, 30 minute dollar CAD chart showing what happened in the days after the CPI release, uh, September 18th, 23rd, 2014. Always be on the lookout for moments when things don't move the way you would expect them to. This is counterintuitive price action. Uh, this counterintuitive price action can provide clues as to uh, future direction. So economic releases are just one type of news trading opportunity. Now let's look at another central bank meetings. Okay, so what's interesting as well, right? What's interesting? This goes back to, in fact, what I was saying in in um, with regards to the auctions, yeah, and prices remaining in auctions. Now, what you will find, or what you can find, is that, for example, this. I don't know what obviously happened further on, but let's say, for example, it's a 30 minute chart, but let's say, as we know, the, the market trades in auctions. Yeah. So this was the move here, of course, went to the downside, then reversed. Yeah. Now, the banks could probably maybe have possibly forecasted an absolute high for the dollar CAD as being somewhere around there. And that might be what was that? Uh, 110, 109s, 109. So 109s, 110s, that's maybe about 150 pips, 160 pips, right? So 160 pip move, right? In, and in, when, when, it, when it comes to like auctions, right? am I right about that? 109, yeah, to 110, to one, yeah. So about 160, 170 pip move, right? So, but in the, the grand scheme of things, yeah, if we know that banks trade in auctions and and providing that obviously you know there wasn't uh, any any news that was um you know stronger for the uh, for the dollar right this is probably just clearing out a whole load of potential stops above it dragging traders into hot water drawing traders going 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 long yeah it, reaching the top of the actual auction yeah and then potentially, you know, to the downside. And again, I don't know what happened fundamentally, but I've seen this happen um, uh, several times um, over the past, uh, with the years that I've been trading, where you get really good news or really bad news and prices actually go beyond that, right? And let's say, for example, this might have been a um, uh, an interest rate hike, yeah? An interest rate hike for the CAD, right? And it's positive for the CAD. 
Now, anything, if prices go above that, you have to consider that to be bargain price, especially, especially if, for example, the dollar is not hiking rates. Yeah, if it is hiking rates and you've got two central banks that are hiking rates, then it's probably within the realm of the market just pricing in what the exchange rate is between the two banks. And it looks like a massive move on a 30 minute, but if you was to zoom out and probably look at that on a maybe a, a daily time frame chart, it might just count as maybe two, you know, or three daily candles, right? That might be one day, that might be one day, and that might be one day. That's it. They only moved 160 pips, that's nothing. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's all about just understanding where the auction is and just or where it might be. And within the realms of possibility, yes, you can get some good news, unexplained, you know, price action after that news. But does that mean that A, fundamentals don't work and B, um, that, uh, you know, you're wrong about, you know, the trade idea? These things do happen. There's nothing we can do about it as long as we... Um, you know, mitigate the risks to the downside. For example, when, when we're losing, we don't, you know, leverage too much. What we're looking for then is just opportunities to potentially, you know, go short at some point at major levels and just following the plan, right? And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it ties into the, um, uh, you know, auctions and understanding auctions. And we saw that today on the... Um, on the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar, right? Where I bet a lot of you were thinking to yourselves, oh my days, what's happened? You know, we had, you know, better than expected. Um, we had better than expected interest rate hike for the, uh, for the New Zealand dollar, right? Surprise half point rate hike, which was excellent news. Yet on a price chart, you've got the opposite happen where you had... I guess I'll trade, uh, compare it with the New Zealand dollar, right? Where you had this move to the upside and then to the downside. And so, um, again, that is actually within, and the point I'm trying to make right here is actually within that auction. Yeah. So, potentially, that rate hike is probably priced in. Also, as well, just from a supply and demand perspective. One second. Let me just mute, mute. Uh, mute. Also remember this, if there's not enough liquidity to the upside, yeah, meaning that there's not enough, if you're a buyer, and this comes into the supply and demand equation and li liquidity, yeah, if you're a buyer, you need enough sell orders at these orders, right, in order to facilitate the buying. And if there's not enough liquidity, this is what would be known as liquidity, all these sell orders to facilitate, you know, the amount of buying that needs to be done. Now, if there's not enough buy orders, sorry, sell orders above the market for there to be buyers, then the market will seek the sell orders and the liquidity below the market. Yeah. And can you imagine how much liquidity was below this price when there was a surprise there must have been a ton, right? There must have been an absolute ton of liquidity because everybody, everybody Recording was- Recording in progress. Oh, let me mute that person and stop video. Right. There must have been a ton of liquidity below the market, correct? If everyone's going long on that surprise and it didn't follow through from a supply and demand perspective, it was probably the fact that the market then wanted this, or it could be a bigger narrative. Who knows? But don't take it as you were wrong for going long on a surprise. Yeah. Don't take it as you, you know, you're, 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 you did the wrong thing because these things do happen. And historically, we've seen that it happens, right? In 2014, it happened. And so, you know, it's happened pretty, you know, several times since then. And so it is what it is, right? You're buying actually as well, when you think about it, a New Zealand dollar at what? At highs. The highs of this auction, right? The highs of that auction, and you consider where everything is, you're buying the New Zealand dollar right here. Who wants to buy the New Zealand dollar here? 
I mean, some people do, and this could have easily have gone to the moon, right? This could have. But ultimately, it still wasn't the best place to buy, regardless, subjectively. If that move had happened somewhere down here, you can imagine the upside potential, because that would have been at the bottom of the auction. That would have been at the at the bargain. That would have been expensive for the dollar, but you know, for the for the um for the US dollar and a bargain price for the New Zealand dollar. And it, that's another really important point. Yeah, the, the, an important point is, I mean, you can trade the news, Mark. You can definitely trade the news. Um, but what I would say is if you are, just be careful about where you are as well. That make, that's, a, that's a really big um, uh, point, is that if you see prices trending you know, to the upside before the news, and then even you know, then there's good news that comes out, yeah, for that same pair, just be aware that the move has probably already been priced in to some degree, yeah? And yes, prices can go higher, but you could go lower before you go higher, yeah? Um, what was the story? Yeah, just kidding. No, no, no. I, it, yeah, but it can be dangerous. And again, I, I'm not here to tell anyone to, to not trade the news, right? Because, you know, you could find a way and um, it's profitable. But for me, I've always just taken, and I say always, but I've, uh, um, over the past maybe a year or two, I've taken the opinion that I'd rather just wait for the dust to settle and then manage to get back in. Do you know what I mean? At, at a later date as prices, you know, potentially come down, right? Or come back to that area. Uh, Daniel says, I've been scratching my head about these types of moves. So many traders uh, still do ask the what. Yeah, why? What the, what the F? Um, I'm so happy I know about uh, what liquidity hunting is. Yeah, it brings sense and confidence, and it does, right? And you're not always thinking to yourself, you know, I mean, again, no one's going to know what, what it is at all times, right? These are market participants that are, um, you know, there's, they're, they're in their thousands, loads of lots. They've got their reasons, for buying or selling, etc. But just know that obviously they're not infallible in terms of um, you know bargains are bargains at the end of the day. And if the um, the New Zealand dollar, if, they, if they're projecting the New Zealand dollar to to be maybe a, you know let's say for example the sixty six cent area in the next maybe three to six months, yeah, then they know that you know any kind of pullback is going to be a bargain and prices might continue falling who knows but the point being is that even if it falls down to to this area here remember this area here from an auction perspective this is all being priced in yeah this is all being priced in and all you're doing is trying just just to look for where those potential higher highs are where the bargains are and from there, you know, where the setups are, whether it's stop hunting, whether it's CPRs, whether it's daily demand, supply zones, you know, that's what you're looking for. Always wait for the pullback. Always wait for the pullback. And try and resist the urge to potentially FOMO if you can. Um, right. So with that being said, I uh, don't know if any of you have read the news, but um, yeah, so I uh, don't think there's anything in here that that, we don't necessarily know. Uh, the, I think the, the, what it is is that um, they, from what I've read, the RBNZ probably are likely to hike one more time by 25 basis points, but um, it's not a guarantee or a given, right? Because all central banks um, are coming to a, uh, a hold or a pause in their rate hikes. Of course, inflation um, you know, if inflation persists, yeah, then, um, you know, it will, uh, they will be forced to kind of hike. And you can see here that inflation has kind of stayed around this, uh, this uh, 7% level, just above 7%. So they're trying to, um, you know, the official cash rate, they're hiking, hiking, hiking to try and get this to come down. So if it starts to come down naturally by the next, um, you know, meeting or before the next meeting, then it takes the chances off the table that they are likely to hike. But, you know, the consensus is right now, today, that they are probably likely to hike at least one more time at their next meeting. Uh, the RBA, RBA Low says,